Hello, my dear friends. I'm Stanislav Shamayev, a licensed business immigration and corporate attorney in Miami, Florida. In today's video, we're going to be comparing EB1A and EB2 NIW in a STEM format. At the end of this video, you will be able to learn how to get a free evaluation of your case. Let's go. But before we begin, guys, smash that like button because you love my content and you want to give me some love and respect for me sitting here on Sunday and doing content for you. The like button from you and a great content from me. Why do we talk about EB1A and EB2 and IW visas? Why do we even compare them? Because they immigrant visas and they start with two magic letters. E B, employment based. Every time you guys see employment based EB category, you can easily define that visa will bring you to the green card. Everything else is non-immigrant visa. There is another similarity between these two and uh, these are the only two categories of visas, exception to the immigration law, where basically we could do self-petitioning. What does it mean in a practical matter? It means that you do not have to have an employer who will be filing on your behalf. You could file from your name, self-petition. You do it yourself. It doesn't mean there cannot be an employer because there may very well be an employer for those petitions, but they are not necessary. So that's why these two visas are separate from everything else, because if you can show that you have a recognition in your field, or if you have something that the US can benefit from, you can get the green card based on one of those two things. And of course, why we're talking about STEM again, guys, because I'm a firm believer that EB2 in AW was created for STEM professionals. And yes, we're getting approvals for business, for uh, sport and other things for in EB2 in AW uh, category. But I think the intent of Congress, and even though the, the law basically says uh, other things like sport, culture and things like that. But the primary intent of the Congress was to bring the uh, highly educated professionals who can benefit the US. And those uh, highly educated professionals are in the STEM category, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And don't quote me on that, but uh, for my years of practice in this field, that's what I see when the immigration officers they love to see like in, in, an engineer or an IT person or a doctor, someone, someone with a good education and good projects. Nevertheless, it all works uh, either way. And EB1A is also very good for STEM, but then, you know, uh, I can tell you that uh, EB1A is really good for any good professional in the field. It could be a businessman, could be an art person, could be an athlete, uh, could be hybrid petitions. A lot of hybrid petitions. Guys, 2023 was the year of hybrid petition filings. IT and business, engineering and medicine. A lot of things going on and there are a lot of new professions where I don't even know the name and nobody knows the name for the profession, but it exists. Don't be confused if you're like, oh my God, I'm doing something new that the, the Congress did not uh, foresee would happen. No, they foresaw everything. They foresaw all the uh, new things that would happen in the technology. So don't be afraid. We got two approvals in 2023 for crypto analysts, guys. Crypto analysts, how do you compare them to each other? There is nothing. It's new. Okay? Relatively new. But there is no competitions. There is no nothing going on. How do you get the approvals for them? Well, we got them. Okay? And we got two out of two. So we know how to work with those new professions, regardless of what they are. Uh, but we're talking about something different today. Let's talk about the criteria for EB2 and IW and EB1A. So EB2 and IW, in short, is the visa for those of you 
who have been involved in some projects, in some experiences in the past that you can translate to the future ideas in the US. Especially if those ideas could be of the benefit to this great country, to the government of this country. And again, I know some, some of you are all standing slow. Yes, I'm just explaining it as if you are a six-year-old uh, boy or a girl. Just easy. I know there's a lot more to this. Uh, so that's why you need to watch those videos with in-depth understanding. So basically, you need to show that you have something to do here in the U.S., and that you've done that in the past to back up your future results. That's EB2 in IW. And EB1A is a little bit different. We look at your recognition in the past, in your professional field, whatever that could be. And we need to find at least three criteria out of the 10. Could be eight, uh, unless it's arts. Eight or 10 criteria. And yes, I file many more criteria than three because I'm not a believer in three criteria <laughs> just to file them. I've never seen a case where I would say, okay, you have three criteria, let's go. Never. I don't believe in that. I believe in six criteria for EB1A to, to get the approval. We basically look in the past and see that you are uh, close or, or at the very top of your field in your profession. And that's enough to deem you an extraordinary person, a person with a talent. Yes, we, we need to show how you're going to apply that benefit in the US, but it's not as strict as in EB2 and AW. The main difference between EB1A and EB2 and AW that uh, in EB2 and AW, you need to prove basically or convince the immigration officer that you will be able to bring the results in your future project that's in the national interest of the United States government. And that's not easy to do, okay? When with EB1A, we need to show that your past achievements and recognition makes you an extraordinary person and you through that you will be able to bring the benefit to the US. So that's the conceptual difference. Of course, there's criteria, education, all this craziness. Uh, and uh, definitely, I, I will, I'm always talking about this in other videos. So please watch other videos. We're discussing that. Those are big, big differences. Let's talk about the recent examples. Guys, just two fresh approvals for EB2 and IW this week. They're a little bit similar because one of them is the engineer from um, Venezuela who got the approval in the field of um, satellite research. Uh, and testing. Space engineer, let's put it this way, with a specializ specialization in satellites. And by the way, guys, if some of you, any of you, or anybody you know are dealing with the space uh, uh, technologies, trust me, that, that's going to be approved. That's going to be approved. The space uh, engineers are so in, so, in such a demand here, okay? And, and many other fields, but space engineers are very, very good. And the other one also space engineer, but he's more on IT side, okay? He's more optimization of the soft with the uh, satellites and things like that. And it's just a coincidence that we, we got two approvals for the satellites, right? But again, IT and, and, and engineer, they're a little bit different. Another approval for EB, EB2 and IW uh, is um, a civil engineer who's uh, helping to do the infrastructure for the high-rise buildings. Nothing special, he's a great professional, good professional in his field, and he's done a lot of projects in the past, and he's going to do a lot of projects in the future. Uh, for EB1A, fresh approval for, also for civil engineer, who is building the bridges. Actually, he has crazy way, his path to get approval is very crazy. He got annoyed first, we withdrew the case. Then uh, we refiled the case, then the first no, no it got uh, withdrawn by the US, USCIS, got approved. The second case got also approved. So now we're sitting on two approvals and we don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, so that, that's a nutshell what happened, crazy stuff. Uh, sometimes you guys, uh, you guys know that USCIS can surprise anyone, even myself. And they did uh, in a good way this time around. Another EB1A, uh, also this week, IT developer, uh, iOS. Uh, also interesting case, we filed him about a month ago with expedited processing and uh, they did not approve 
within two weeks and we had to contact them and call them, send them letters because sometimes they say, okay, we're not going to do it expedited. Here's your money back and we're going to do it the regular way. But it didn't happen this time around. And uh, it took them a month to approve his petition. And uh, no worry fee, nothing, uh, but it just took him uh, twice as longer than usual. Uh, but again, result is a result. So um, uh, I'm happy for this client. And, and there's a lot a lot more. We have uh, two AB1As for uh, b- businessmen, one women, one, one guy, both uh, one from Russia, one from Kazakhstan. Uh, and uh, uh, we got a bunch more, a bunch more. If you guys come for my streams every Thursday, I always give you update for uh, recent approvals. What can I do for you? What my team can do for you for for the purpose of these two visas? The strategy, guys. All these clients I've been talking about, the approvals that we have, all of them did the same thing. First of all, they got a free evaluation of your case. You can go down below this video, find the links and fill out those questionnaires I will get back to you within two days and give you the analysis of your case, okay? Once your analysis is in and I say, hey, you have the potential to file your case within six months and get an approval, you have to come to the complex immigration planning where I already built a strategy for your case, a written winning strategy for your case. And once you have that, it's time to start your case with my team, which is gonna go for another six months and then we're gonna file and get you approved with more than 90% uh, uh, approval chance rate so do that don't postpone it till whatever do it right now don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel don't forget to follow me on instagram tiktok facebook and other platforms all the links below this video and remember your future begins here good luck